Hello everyone, Doc Scott here with another essential oils video. Uh, today I'm going to be busting the myth that only one company has pure, high quality, and authentic essential oils. There is a common myth and extreme competitiveness among companies and product users that only one essential oil company has quality, pure, and authentic essential oils. This is a controversial and very divisive subject, and some take it as far as to attack anyone who chooses a different brand than they do. Uh, credible scientists, practitioners, and aromatherapists and product users know that this assertion is a myth and not founded in science. The reality is that the majority of essential oils destined for use in aromatherapy are purchased from a small number of brokers, vendors, and suppliers. So it is very possible that two or more essential oil companies will have very similar essential oils because they purchased them from the same vendor. And before someone thinks that their company is different or immune from this, yes, this even applies to companies that have their own farms. It is just not feasible nor is it logical to believe that a company could own enough land to produce all of the essential oils that they sell to the public. If you don't believe me, all you have to ask yourself is, where are all the citrus farms that produce the lemon, grapefruit, orange, and other citrus fruits? In order to bust this myth and show just how similar some essential oils can be, I purchased a lemon, lavender, and peppermint essential oil from six different retailers. Three of them were direct selling companies and three were retail companies. I sent these samples to a reputable lab and requested a GCMS test or analysis on each one of them. Now I understand that there are more tests to really determine purity and authenticity of essential oils such as specific gravity, optical rotation, organoleptic testing, heavy metals, microbiome, and refractive index. And if you want to dial into the therapeutic value of the essential oils, you would include KCO2 analysis to determine the bioavailability of that essential oil and laser scanning confocal microscopy to prove the essential oil permeates human cells and where it localizes within the cell. But for the purpose of this presentation, we will only review the GCMS testing for these six companies. Now the other thing is I don't plan to identify the companies by name because the purpose of this presentation is not to determine what company has the best essential oils, but to show that more than one company can have quality, pure, authentic essential oils that are very similar. I will also say that in my experience, one company can produce essential oils that have a more desirable therapeutic compound profile that meet stringent scientific standards. Here is are lemon samples. The chromatograms for each of the six lemon essential oil samples, as you can see, they are remarkably similar. Now let's look at the relative percentage of the major compounds in the six samples. Again, the results are very similar across the board. Uh, nothing is really amiss or indicative of a problem with these samples. And so it appears that these lemon oil samples um, all are very similar and they would be fine for therapeutic use. Here are the peppermint samples, the chromatograms from the peppermint samples. Um, they have greater variation than our lemon samples did. The differences will become more apparent when the percentages of each compound are identified on the next slide and compared to known standards. So here we have all of the relative percentages of the compounds, the major compounds that are in these peppermint samples that I sent out. Something to keep in mind with these numbers are that they are not absolute percentages. When the GCMS test is read, they take the top 10 peaks in the chromatogram and those are typically used to determine the, the relative percentages of compounds within that essential oil sample. So in other words, you may have 28 peaks in the report, but you take the top 10 
and use those 10 peaks as 100% of the sample. So in reality, you may only be getting 98% of the true sample with many minor components uh, being left out. In addition, some rounding errors could potentially push the total of the percentages over 100%. So just keep those in mind. Um, when the percentages are compared to those found for these peppermint samples or compared to those found in the published literature, um, you can see Company D is of one that would really, I would not use that as a, uh, a therapeutic essential oil because they are out of specs for the menthone. So you'll see in the red bold um, that we have a problem with Company D on their menthone and the 1,8-cineol or eucalyptol on Company F. Those are both out of specs compared to what you would see in the published literature. Now if you go further and look at the standard, since these were all um, U.S origin peppermints, then we're going to look at the ISO standard for U.S. peppermint. And you'll see that there really is a lot of things that become out of spec in that realm when you look at that. However, when you compare them versus these standards, these ISO standards, I, I, like, I prefer to compare to a scientific standard. And so the samples that are most concerning are samples from company D and F, which are outside spec for three or more standards, and then followed by company B and E, which each have two compounds that are slightly out of spec. When it comes to these peppermint samples, I would personally prefer sample from company A. Here are the chromatograms for lavender essential oil. Um, we can see that one sample is quite a bit different from the others, which will become more apparent as we review the percentages on the next slide. Uh, here we have the samples and the relative percentages of each compound found within them. Uh, we see that samples from company D and company E fall outside what is reported in the published literature for uh, lavandulil acetate with sample D also out of spec for uh, beta osamine. Also, if you look at company B, that is too high of a percentage for linalyl acetate. Uh, when you compare all of these samples to the ISO standards, these are down here again, you'll see that we have company A slightly high on lavandulil acetate. We'll see that B is going to be out of spec also in that same area. Company D just has problems all over the place. We're going to talk a little bit more about that sample in just a second. And uh, then we have company F, which has two areas that are out of spec according to the ISO standards. Now I wanted to point out uh, company D because this, this sample is rather interesting because uh, not only is it out of spec on what you would normally, the, the top five compounds found in lavender, it is had some interesting things detected in it. We see camphor was at 3.6%, uh, borneol 11.1%, and then arsenial content got clear up to 13.2%. And what that tells us is that this sample is likely a mixture of lavender and spike lavender because these compounds up at the top, they're all indicative of a spike lavender sample, not a true lavender sample. Um, so this is one again that this would not be something that I would use uh, therapeutically as a lavender because it is not a true lavender according to the samples. So I hope that this has shown that pure, authentic and quality essential oils can be found at more than one company. It really is a myth and people should be discouraged from stating that only their company has pure quality and authentic essential oils. Those who do state this will quickly lose their credibility. Uh, what one can say is that their company consistently produces a more preferable therapeutic compound profile according to scientific standards than other companies.
I encourage all who love essential oils to think in a world of abundance, where there is room for more than one brand of essential oils, and most of all, to show respect for others' choices. We should not demean or attack others because of their choice of essential oils company. I keep my books brand neutral and prefer to share my knowledge with the masses who love essential oils regardless of their brand choice. Like everyone else, I do have a favorite brand, and I respect others' right to choose their favorite brand. People who love essential oils should put their efforts into sharing these healing molecules with others rather than trying to tear down other brands of essential oils. If you want to become certified in essential oils, I encourage you to check out my essential oil certification program. Very robust, scientifically uh, founded and evidence-based. Uh, you can see that at iocertified.com. Until next time, I hope you will join me in raising a healthier generation naturally.